are very happy to have with us today our respected and beloved President Sri Sri Swami Chidananda Giri. As we all know, 2017 marks the centenary of the founding of Guruji's OSS work. And we feel honored that our president made the trip to India to be with us during this special year. Loving pronouns, dear ones of God and Guru. In the name of God, our own beloved father, mother, and friend, I greet you all, and in the name of our divine lineage of gurus, Bhagavan Krishna, Jesus Christ, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswar, our Guru Dev Paramahansa Yoganandaji, in their great joy and unconditional love, I greet you all, and I pray that that unconditional love, that great joy of God, that infinite divine bliss, flow out over this gathering. Feel their love, feel their joy. As we come together to sit at their feet, to feel their wisdom, to feel their joy, know that each of you is cherished and loved and blessed by these great ones. And I pray that that love enfold you and surround you and fill you and permeate your hearts. Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai Guru. Swamiji said that YSS devotees were happy that when they learned that I was going to be able to come for the centennial gatherings. I tell you truly, there was never any matter of choice or debate in my own mind. I felt as soon as the uh, responsibility for this position was placed on me, almost immediately the first marching order of Gurudev was go to India. <laughs> So this beautiful centennial year where, where we've just come now from Ranchi for the first week of Shard Sangam and we will be returning there tomorrow morning and participating in the, the second Shard Sangam. I think many of you are either on your way from or to. How many attended the first Sangam who are here? Yes, quite a few. How many are going to the second Sangam? Yeah, about an equal number. Wonderful. Jai Guru. In between these two divine events and in the midst of our centennial year, what a joy it is to, to be here present in this magnificent, holy, divine atmosphere of Dakshineswar Ashram for Satsanga. And as I was saying in some of my earlier remarks at uh, Ranchi and earlier at Delhi. It's so wonderful to contemplate how Gurudev's teachings, how Gurudev's techniques and way of life that each of us has embraced, each of us has made part of our daily life, how that adds to this beautiful quality, this beautiful feeling of satsanga, it adds an entire new inner dimension, the real meaning of satsanga, the real meaning of satsanga, which means fellowship with God, fellowship with sat, with truth. So I'm going to invite all of us tonight to, as much as we are blessed and enjoying, are enjoying the outward company of of each other, this outward gathering of divinely attuned, divinely transparent souls. As much as we enjoy that, let's together journey inward to that inner dimension, 
of satsanga and touch the true inner experience of truth, it's made so, so much easier when we come on sacred pilgrimage, isn't it? I know all of you, many of you come here again and again, some from far distant places around the world. I saw a large group from Argentina, I think it was, just last night. There you are, Jai Guru. Others from different parts of the country, of India, different continents. In fact, Swami Vishwanandaji was reminding me, reminding all of us, uh, after the first Sangam last week, we were looking over the, the roster of attendees, and it seems that there were souls there from every single continent, except Antarctica. <laughs> so, so truly in these hundred years, Gurudev's work has, has gone from just a few seeds that he planted, actually that were planted by his Param Gurus, our Param Gurus, and marches on, marches on, marches on, ever unfolding, ever reaching out all around the world. We've only seen but the very beginning so far. But even that, even that, how thrilling it is, how, how hope-inspiring it is for each of us individually in terms of our own soul aspirations and also for our larger family, our global family of humanity who is so much in need of that light, of that wisdom, that guidance. Sitting here in this magical environment, this beautiful, beautiful ashram, I, I just can't help but feel the such, such love for Gurudev, for what he brought, and especially here in the, in the city of Divine Mother, at the shores of the Holy Ganga, overshadowed by Gurudev's ashram. One feels that it's very easy to, to immerse, to go within and experience that presence of the divine. When I was, just yesterday morning, we left Ranchi and came on the way to Calcutta by air and just getting up in the morning, getting ready to go, thinking, oh, Calcutta, Calcutta, Calcutta. And immediately there was this prayer, this, this urge, this rejoicing in my heart, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Divine Mother. And you know, you sit here, you feel the, physically, the, the, the beautiful current of Mother Ganga flowing from the snowy heights of the Himalayas, thousands of miles away, the abode of the yogis, the rishis, the saints for thousands and thousands of years flowing down through the course of India, reaching out to the ocean here, here at Calcutta. It's so easy to feel the embrace of Mother, of the Divine Mother. Take a moment to, to experience that. Take a moment to, to feel you are her child, we are all her children. How she longs to have us back in the fold of her love, in the fold of her joy, of her grace. This morning we had the blessing of visiting the Kali Temple, just a few short steps from here. Most of you have visited that shrine, that powerful, as Guru Dev said, nuclear center of spiritual power, one of the one of the holiest, one of the most powerful, really, no doubt, anywhere on earth. And having the darshan, having a few moments of meditation before the image of Mother, Mother Kali. Such a powerful, again, urge, powerful prayer awoke within me and I, I felt 
my heart just saying to her, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, banish the darkness of delusion from our hearts and minds. Banish the darkness of delusion from my heart and mind, from the hearts and minds of all Gurudev's devotees. Banish the darkness of delusion from the hearts and minds of all humanity, that they can feel your love, that they can feel your light. And you know, you think, you look at that beautiful, anciently crafted image of Mother Kali, and in the prayer for her light, you know, in one sense to an outward observer, it might seem strange that her form is dark, and yet we're praying, banish the darkness of illusion, banish the darkness of ignorance. Well, there are many deep reasons, many deep symbolisms behind that icon, that murti, that image of Divine Mother. But certainly one of them is that, yes, she appears dark. As long as we only try to apprehend, as long as we only try to observe and relate to her through our outer instruments, through our senses, through our minds, yes, then she's dark, but still present, but dark to our higher sleeping intuitive faculties that need to be awakened. You know that beautiful chant of Gurudev, he addressed this point and he was asking or repeating in the chant how ironic that, that Divine Mother is depicted as being dark of form. And you remember the chant, he says, who says you are dark? Who tells me thou art dark, O my Mother Divine? Thousands of suns and moons from thy body do shine. It takes the light of our yoga awakened, meditation awakened, intuitive faculties, intuitive instruments of apprehension to really begin to enter into that satsanga, enter into that communion with mother whose form appears dark, but whose real form, whose real form exists in that higher vibration of chittakash, the light of consciousness, the super ether, the bliss ether, as Guruji said, only known to those who practice meditation, only known to those who take the time, make the commitment to go within, to awaken those, those instruments. Then one day, one day each of us will be blessed with that darshan that Gurudev so beautifully described. You remember in autobiography of a yogi, he was praying to Divine Mother and again and again he prayed and then the darkness of his interior distress of not feeling the presence of Mother, of Divine Mother, was banished and he said, there she appeared and he said, haloed in splendor, the Divine Mother stood before me. Haloed in splendor, the Divine Mother stood before me. You know, Guruji wrote these things. He described these experiences his whole life, his whole seeking, his whole sadhana as a seemingly uh, awakening devotee. All is for our benefit. All is for our lessons. All is to, to give us something that we can conceive of, that we can take within in our own meditations, in our own seeking of God. He didn't need any of that. He was born, he, he was born liberated. He, he worked out all of that lifetimes ago. And yet he came and so beautifully not only played the drama of the disciple seeking and yearning and, and striving for God contact, striving to find an illumined master, an illumined guru. Not only playing that role, but so beautifully and immortally describing it so that in that, in that scripture for our age, autobiography of a yogi, that all of us could feel, yes, there's hope for me as well. 
there's a path that I can follow as well. So here we sit in the lap of Divine Mother in her city, by her living stream of power flowing down from the Himalayas, enjoying this satsang together, feeling her presence, feeling her love. Close your eyes just for a moment. Take that one thought of Gurudev. Who tells me thou art dark, O Mother? Because by Guru's grace, by practice of the meditation techniques, by our own devotional yearning and perseverance and continuity, we can appreciate, we can visualize, we can feel. Now, right now, visualize, as Guruji said, haloed in splendor, the Divine Mother stands before me. Her face, tenderly smiling, was beauty itself. And as she says to each soul who comes to her feet, always have I loved thee, ever shall I love thee. These are some of the feelings and, and thoughts and yearnings that make this environment, this, this place in Calcutta, always one of the most dear to my heart. I'm so, so thrilled that I had a chance to be here in this holy place with all of you during this short visit to India. And one other thing too, we here at this Dakshineswar Ashram, I can't help but also feel another aspect of Divine Mother, and that is our beloved Sri Sri Dayamataji, who, who spent so many days and deep periods of communion with Guru, with, with Divine Mother, forever blessed these grounds. At the first Sangam in Ranchi, we, we had the joy of showing to the devotees this newly released book, which all of you may have seen or will see soon. It's Visiting the Saints of India with Sri Dayamata by Sri Mrinalini Mata. I wanted just to read one little passage here that took place right here on the veranda of the, of the ashram building there because it helps just to remind us what a blessing it is that we have these places of pilgrimage and to use them, use them as a, as a haven, use them as a, as a shelter, a place to come and renew that connection when the connection with Divine Mother, with the connection with Guru Dave may seem a little tenuous, may seem a little strained, he gave these beautiful places of pilgrimage to reinforce that connection. So this is Mirnalini Mata describing how they, uh, Dayama, his party, including Mirnalini Mata, had had visited Anandamoyi Ma's ashram in Calcutta. Anandamoyi Ma was staying there for a brief time. And then Mrinalini Mata described, she said, when they were sitting there meditating with Anandamoyi Ma and feeling that great love of Divine Mother that flowed through that great soul, that great being. But Mrinalini Ma said, strangely, her own attention, her own gaze became irrevocably drawn to and fixed on Dayamataji herself. And she said, I felt such a power of divine communion radiating out from Dayama. And she, she herself said, oh, what joy. I, I haven't seen this. I haven't felt this since sitting at the feet of Gurudev himself. And she said, then they took leave of Ananda Moima after that beautiful time of communion in her presence and came back here to the Yogoda Mat. And she said then they got back, Dayamataji was still in a deep, absorbed divine communion, divine state of consciousness just came out on the veranda here, overlooking the, the river, overlooking the, the lawn where we're all seated. 
just sat down on the floor and went into a deep, deep state. And again, just waves of Divine Mother's love emanating from her. Those waves of love, those vibrations of love are what each of us feels, what each of us can feel and take with us every time we come here on pilgrimage. Diamataji herself said a few things about that occasion. Let me, say, let me read to you her words. She said about this time when she was having that experience there on the veranda, she said, Beloved children of Master, I cannot fully describe this experience, nor have I the wish to do so. I only pray that the Divine Beloved bless each one of you with a sweeter and deeper glimpse of her sacred presence within you. I am convinced beyond all doubt of the illimitable love she feels for each one of us, each one of us. It is we who are lacking in that love for her. And then Ma says, try again and again to become ever more absorbed in her sweetness. For me, times of satsanga are not even so much a time for class instruction or discourse, although those of course are necessary and very valuable for us all to become deep, more deeply grounded in Gurudev's teachings, Gurudev's guidance for living the daily life, guidance for deepening meditation. But more than that, for me, these times of satsang have always been much more rewarding when we can use them as a time to together experience, to together feel something of what Gurudev is pointing us towards. And again, in this environment, this city, this holy place of pilgrimage, so infused with Divine Mother's love, infused with Divine Mother's consciousness, my mind went to Guruji's beautiful book of Whispers from Eternity. You know, Gurudev, Gurudev had so many facets. He was he was just truly indefinable or uncategorizable in that sense because in his infinite consciousness such a myriad of expressions, such a myriad of reflections of the divine consciousness, the different forms of divine consciousness, different forms of divine communion would manifest so purely, so powerfully through his activity through his presence, through his legacy of teaching and organizational work. And one of them, one of them that was so sweet that I always think of when I come to Calcutta this time, I felt the same on my last visit, is that unique outpouring of devotional communion that Guru Dev seemed to effortlessly be able to pull from his soul. Something of what he himself was feeling and, and experiencing in those exalted states of communion with Divine Mother. And so many of them he put into writing in these beautiful prayers that we find in his, in the lessons, in certainly in whispers from eternity. And I, want to, I wanted to, to bring this out because we may forget that actually Gurji even says in his introduction to this book, in explaining the very title of the book, Whispers from Eternity, he says, by eternity, he says in naming the book, Whispers from Eternity, I mean by eternity, capital E, God in the aspect of the Eternal Mother. These whispers, these soul whispers of communion back and forth, they truly not only set our devotion on fire, awaken our own devotion, but it sets a, a model, it sets a pattern 
for striving. It sets a pattern by which each of us can take these, Guruji said, spiritualized words, in other words, spiritualized in that he himself infused the, the words of these prayers and the other similar prayers in the lessons and in his other books, infused them with the power of his own divine communion, making it easier for all of us, his devotees, to use that same approach, that same avenue, you might say, to have that same experience. Let me, let's just read one and, and practice this inwardly together because it goes along with so much of what I have been saying already tonight. Gurji wrote this. Now again, remember these are meditations. These are, these are inward communions. So close the eyes. Put the body and mind in the meditation attitude and just follow along as I read the words out loud. Divine Mother, be thou the only flame in our hearts, banishing all darkness within us. In our tears of love for thee, wash away our love for material possessions. In the bliss of our communion with thee, destroy forever all sorrows. Unite our little hearts into a heart great enough to contain thine omnipresence. In the mirror of thy divinity, may we behold ourselves as perfect. In the mirror of thy divinity, may we behold ourselves as perfect. Let the fire of our love for thee soar triumphantly above the tiny hissing flames of earthly desires. Come, O oh perfect joy, into the waiting temple of our devotion. Come, O oh perfect joy, into the waiting temple of our devotion. Come, O oh perfect joy, into the waiting temple of our devotion. Dear ones, as I said a little earlier, there's an outer expression of devotion, there's an outer expression of satsang, there's an outer expression of pilgrimage that are of tremendous value in our spiritual lives, in our sadhana. But even more than that is the inner dimension, the inner experience that's the true pilgrimage, the true satsanga, the true inner divine communion. In this path of Yogoda Satsanga, we have the methods, the techniques of the Kriya Yoga science, the techniques of meditation, the how to live Dharma that enables us to enter into that inner dimension of Satsanga, fellowship with God, fellowship with truth. It enables us to enter that inner dimension of pilgrimage, wherein we realize the yoga truth, the yogic truth, that our bodies themselves can become places of pilgrimage. Our bodies are, themselves can become temples of the divine, temples of divine mother. Again, just with your eyes closed, visualize something of this truth, feel some of this truth, because these concepts, the devotion, the love, the yearning for divine mother, along with the practice of the yoga science, these powerful techniques from India's golden age. They work together. They harmonize together that Guruji has given us this perfectly balanced path, the fastest path, the yoga science plus devotion. So visualize and feel a little bit of this as we, as we take a little journey through this yoga concept, this yoga perception of the true place of pilgrimage in the divinely designed and divinely created human body. And just as we're sitting here by 
the river of Mother Ganga, the power of Mother Ganga, the life-giving waters of the river flowing from the snowy eternal abode of the saints and rishis of wisdom in the Himalayas. Even so, in our own bodies, there is that river. Just as from the eternal snows of the Himalayas, so from the nameless and formless, taintless, ever pure white light of the Sahasra, the thousand petaled lotus at the top of the cerebrum, that abode of infinite wisdom, infinite cosmic consciousness. From that place, from that abode, Mother as Shakti, Mother as Mahaprana, Mother as the life energy that creates and sustains our body, takes up her work in our forms. When this human body was formed with the beginning, with that one primal cell at the time of conception, and the soul along with its consciousness and its connection with that maha prana, with that maha mother, cosmic mother divine, begins to create that form. Mother flows down, the Shakti flows down through that channel of the central nervous system of the spine. Within a few days even, scientists say that that channel, nerve, neural groove they call it, that becomes later the developed cerebrospinal axis. That's the first anatomical feature, one of the first, to be created in the body. Why? Because that Shakti, that energy is beginning to flow down, down the spine, creating and enlivening those astral centers of consciousness and perception and life in the spine. Creating the body according to the divine pattern. Now lift your eyes, look into the point between the eyebrows, look into the kutasta. Visualize, as Guruji said, it doesn't have to be a perception. It can be just visualization in the beginning that eventually will turn into perception. That beautiful aura of golden light surrounding the field of opalescent blue. Now let the consciousness become one pointedly fixed at that silvery white five-pointed star. That is the star of cosmic consciousness radiating the light of the thousand petal lotus. But even that form, even our form, derives from that divine, formless, nameless consciousness. The five points of the star then become our five-pointed human body, head, two arms, two feet, becomes our the five full differentiated life forces in our body. It's only delusion, it's only the darkness of delusion that makes us think that these are these frail mortal forms. Again and again we have to bring our consciousness back to the remembrance, to the realization, to the yearning to know what we truly are. We are not these bodies as we see them. We are the divine children of Divine Mother, sent to play the drama of joy, of outward experiencing of the world. What a different place this world would be if even a few had that continuity of consciousness, that continuity of connection with Divine Mother. Now each one of us can forge that. The sadhana that Guru Dev gave to us, those powerful techniques, each one of those in its own way is to bring us into that consciousness, to make us be able to live in this world without losing that divine connection, to live in this world connected to that source of wisdom, that source of bliss, that source of life, source of unconditional love. You know, we begin meditation with Guruji's unique energization exercises, isn't it? 
where we visualize the energy flowing in, we tense, send the energy to the various body parts, relax. Do you know what you're doing when you do those exercises? You're allowing Divine Mother to feed you, just as she would her little child. Through that mouth of God in the medulla, it is nothing less than the great Om, the great Mahaprana of Divine Mother that's flowing into the body, consciously invited by the willpower, by the practice of the technique. These are not just physical exercises. I'm just pointing this out as one example of how, again, Guruji Sadhana is so imbued with not just a, a philosophical or, or technical science of yoga, but the closest, most intimate means of communing with Mother Divine, with our Father Divine, that personal, deep relationship with God. In the body, which is the place of pilgrimage, we feel that presence of God in all of the different sub-centers, spinal chakras, each one you might say that the Divine Mother has created her offspring, her children, her children living in those, children meaning expressions of divine consciousness waiting to be awakened by the practice of meditation, waiting to be awakened as by the practice of Kriya, by the practice of the other techniques, the Hongsa, the Om technique. We gradually withdraw the energy from its outer dispersion in the world, gradually withdraw it from the muscles, from the senses, and let it retire into the spine. And then we feel that loving embrace, that loving ascent of the creative Shakti that had gone down into the body, creating the body, awakening those spiritual children in the spine. Feel that now. Let's go, just sit again and go up and down the spine. Chanting Om at each of the centers. Make it not just a word, make it the living power, the living life, the living presence of Divine Mother. And feel in each center those children of Divine Mother, those expressions of Divine Consciousness, expressions of Divine Perception, and experience greeting her, welcoming her, Mother, awaken us, Mother, awaken us. Om at the coccyx center at the base of the spine. And moving up, Om at the sacral center. Om. at the navel center, Om at the heart center, Om at the cervical center, Om at the medulla, Om at the kutasta, Do this again and again after the practice of the techniques. And we feel Gurji's, again, how beautifully he has placed into words not only the truth of what we experience, but the, the way that we can affirm, the way that we can realize, the way that we can make real those experiences. Go up the spine, chanting Om at the centers, again and again, until we feel engrossed is the bee of my mind. At the blue lotus feet of my Divine Mother, engrossed is the bee of my mind that has been so noisily 
busily seeking out some source of satisfaction, some nectar of happiness and joy, hither and thither, this experience, that experience, this material desire, that material accomplishment. And yet when we get into the spine, as Guruji taught through the techniques, when we form that loving relationship of child with Divine Mother, and allow her grace, her blessings, to awaken those higher instruments of perception, and the mind becomes engrossed, the mind becomes riveted, mind becomes completely satisfied at just drinking the nectar from that one-pointed communion with our own Divine Mother. Engrossed is the bee of my mind at the blue lotus feet of my Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Divine Mother. Receive me on thy lap, O Mother. Receive me on thy lap, O Mother. Cast me not at delusion's door. Cast me not at death's door. Receive me on thy lap, O Mother. This is how we make the little body in which our illimitable, magnificent, omnipresent soul is temporarily dwelling. This is how we make that body into a true place of pilgrimage, a true temple of the divine, a place where all the divine qualities of love and kindness and servicefulness and strength and courage all those divine qualities love to come and dwell in that temple, in that place of pilgrimage. If we do the necessary sadhana, if we do even a little bit of the effort in meditation, if we follow even a little bit of the path that Gurudev has set our feet upon. One of the, pl one of the reasons that the Great Ones come to earth is to show us that these divine perceptions, these divine concepts can become real for each of us. Again, what better place in this holy city of Calcutta where Gurudev spent so many of his youthful years. Last night, uh, some of us monks were had the, the blessing of spending a little time in Guruji's boyhood home. Sarita and Samnathji so kindly received us, as they have so many of you. As we were leaving, then another large group was coming in. But, you know, you feel, you visit places like that. This room where Guruji meditated, where Babaji came to him and sent him on his mission to the West. Or you go up the river to Sarampore, where, again, where Babaji sat and talked to Sri Yukteswarji where Sri Yukteswarji had his ashram and imparted that training to Gurudev. For so many millions around the world who have read of these things in Autobiography of a Yogi, and yet then to come and see those places and feel, to, to put your own feet, to put your own hands, your own heart in those places where, the, where those masters walked, where those events that uh, perhaps feel feel almost like they're in another dimension of another world when we read about them in Autobiography of a Yogi. But they become more real when we come on pilgrimage to places like this. And certainly no place other than Calcutta has more share of our own legacy of, of inspiration, our own legacy of, of spiritual striving, spiritual blessing. 
And yet remember, the outward pilgrimage, Gurji would say to us, is just the prelude. Just as they take human form to show all of us what the potentials are, that it is possible for us to know and to, to perceive and to experience for ourselves those divine states of consciousness. It's in that sadhana, it's in following that, that inner commitment, that inner dedication of our will, of our heart, of our minds, that reminding ourselves again and again as Guruji urges us, yes, as he achieved, so may I achieve. It's all there before us. What gratitude, what joy, what blessing that causes in the heart of, of the true devotee the gifts and the blessings and the legacy and the benedictions of these great ones to each one of us, to each one of you. Just take a moment or two again to deepen the perception of the spiritual treasures, the spiritual gifts that Divine Mother and Gurudev ceaselessly offer to us with their omnipresent hands. Feel and receive, feel and receive, feel and receive. Now as we chant the great Om chant that Gurudev gave to us, feel that it isn't just a word or a mental concept or even a, a musical expression, but feel that it is literally the embrace of the loving Divine Mother, that universal life of the, of the cosmos sustaining us, it's that life that created us, that life and consciousness of our own Divine Mother vibrating throughout the ether, throughout the cosmos. Let it go into every cell, every bone, every thought, every feeling. Become drunk with the Divine Mother's presence as we chant her name of Om.
Pray together, Divine Mother, Great Gurus of Yogoda Satsanga, Bhagavan Krishna, Jesus Christ, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, our Guru Dev, Armansa Yoganandaji. Saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Divine Gurudev, bless us, be with us always, guiding and inspiring us, ever leading us onward and upward on the path of our own self-realization. Divine Mother, Divine Mother, Divine Mother, may thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion. And may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti.